Hello and welcome back to another podcast and video from Fantasy Football Scout about Euro 2024. It is Thursday night before the game kicks off and I'm going to take you through my final draft. I'm absolutely exhausted. About 20 videos, about 20 podcasts uh, in the build-up to this and the tournament hasn't even started. But tonight I'm going to be explaining the chip strategy I've landed on and the team I've landed on as well. Well, please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to be uh, continuing our content as the tournament goes on to make sure you know everything you need to to get as many points as possible. And we're also in this video going to be talking to uh, a fan team hero, a guy who once won 200,000 euros on their Premier League game for a 20 euro buy-in. Absolutely amazing. And we're going to be talking about the free fan team game that you can all get involved in. The details are below. There's a £2,000 prize pool. And every single user who beats the Fantasy Football Scout team is going to win a month's free membership. We're going to talk to him about his team. You can even just copy him if you want and enter the tournament. Not a bad person to copy for fan team games. So here we are. Um, yeah, look, let's talk about chip strategy first. It's what we need to deal with before we get to picking our team. I've said it a hundred times. You all know this by now, but we need to know what our chip strategy strategy is. We get two chips, a wild card and a limitless. Where do you play them? It really makes a difference to your first uh, team for the uh, your initial team for the tournament. Now, look on the screen. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see a little chart here that I've used in the past. It just shows that the only match days you can actually play chips a match day two, a match day three, quarterfinals, semifinals, and final. And in a previous video, I suggested that I might go for the chip strategy, which is limitless in the quarterfinals and wildcard in the semifinals. Now, that proved to be a pretty unpopular one, actually. Not many people went for that. I still think there's there's good things about that. But I have come to the conclusion that is not the best. It's not the most... Um, I don't know. It's not the optimal strategy. So I'm. We're not going to discuss this anymore. If you want to, if you want to know about chip strategy, watch some chip strategy videos. I did one. The FPL Wire have done a really good one. Loads of people have done. Just type Euro 2024 chip strategy. Loads of people will will come out. FPL Harry, who who came on our video, loads of them. Right. So go and watch them. But what I have come to the conclusion that I'm going to do, and this is kind of loose, but let me tell you. So. As I bring up the little uh, uh, symbols here, and if you're listening on podcast, don't worry, I've just got a wild card symbol and a limitless symbol. This joker here, this is the uh, the wild card um, symbol, right? And I am going to play this in match day two, right? And I'm going to explain in a second. The limitless, I am going to play in match day three. Now, okay, you're looking at that and thinking, that's different from your last chip strategy video. Yes, my last chip strategy video, that was a week ago or so, I have changed my mind the more I've thought about this. Now, this strategy of playing your chips in the groups, which is one, that at one point in this, I was thinking, no, that's definitely not the way to go. I have come around to, because what it gives you is this. It gives you a free hit in match day one, essentially, because we've got unlimited transfers heading into match day one. And if we've got a wild card in match day two, then we don't have to think about any match days beyond match day one. We can just load up on players who've got good fixtures in match day one. OK, because match day two, you would play your wild card. Why play the wild card in match day two? Well, because there's a lot of teams who are playing their hardest games. France are playing Holland. You might not. You might want to avoid that. Spain are playing Italy. You might want to avoid that. You've got uh, England are playing Denmark. Some people think that's their hardest game. It's between that and Serbia. So you might want to avoid them. There's a bunch of teams that you would have if you were just picking a team, but you might want to avoid for match day two. So playing the wild card gives you the option to go for the upsides of, 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 of teams that do have good fixtures. Like, for example, Croatia. Croatia have a good fixture in match day two, but they didn't in match day one. So suddenly, you can go double, triple Croatia. Now, once again, because you're playing the limitless in match day three, this is essentially a free hit. So don't worry about the fact that Croatia, you might not want them in match day three, or any of these teams, you might not want them in match day three. Just pick again for match day two, a completely blank slate. Now, why the wild card in match day two and not the limitless? Because really in match day two, because of those big hitting teams who have got lesser good fixtures, you know, not as good fixtures, you're probably not going to need the unlimited budget. You're probably going to be able to get a really good team focusing on the teams that have good games with just a wild card. On to match day three. Why the limitless? Well, yes, there may be rotation. Yes, there may be injuries by then. Yes, there may be teams who are already through and rest players. However, we're going to get a pretty good indication, I think, of who needs to win and therefore is going to be playing their top get the, their top players and who 
doesn't need to win and suggestions in the media, they're going to get benched, they're going to get benched, this sort of thing. So the Limitless allows you to target those teams with absolutely killer match day three fixtures like, for example, uh, Portugal, Portugal, Georgia. You can definitely make sure that you triple up for them. Uh, another one is, uh, I think, uh, who I think England have got a pretty good game. I think Spain are playing Albania. There's a few fixtures that you think triple up, triple up, triple up, right? And with the Limitless, of course, you really can triple up because there's no no budget constraints. Now, what that does again is match day three is a free hit because as we know, between the group stages and the knockouts, you get a completely another free hit that is forced upon everyone right so you actually get two free hits in this game one is forced between the group stages and the, and the and the knockouts and one is given to you to use whenever you want so then you enter the round of 16 you've got a, a, a that that forced upon you wild card and then you've got to pick a team to get you through the knockouts right because you've got no more chips you do get three transfers between the quarterfinals and uh, the round of 16 and the quarterfinals and then i think it's maybe four and five and it goes up so you get more and more chance to to kind of take out players who are eliminated now the reason that people are playing a wild card or keeping a wild card for the knockout. So people who don't have this chip strategy of mine of using your chips in the groups and they're saving a wild card for the knockouts. There's two big reasons and they are good reasons, to be fair. Reason number one is you have protection in case in the round of 16, a bunch of big hitters go out. France, Germany, Belgium, England, whatever. And suddenly your team's decimated and you, you, you know, you can't. Even with free transfers, you can't get to a squad and your game's basically over. Okay, so that's number one. It's protection. But number two, someone like, you know, Praz, I know, is going for the strategy. Number two is it turns the round of 16 for those individuals into a free hit. Another free hit. Right. Because they get the free transfers going into the round of 16 and then they're playing the wild card after. So they can triple up on, on the team's play with, with great fixtures that we don't know what they are yet, of course. In the round of 16, they can triple up and go for those teams. Now, Lewis, FPL Reaction, who I, I do an audio podcast with about this, he made a really good point, which is people are going to be doing that anyway. People are going to be tripping up, tripling up on those teams anyway. So that, that, that idea that, that, that it's an attacking thing is, is neutralized a bit because everyone's going to triple up on the big teams playing the little teams. The only way it goes wrong, my chip strategy, is if then a bunch of big teams lose to smaller teams. Now, that might happen, of course, but that's less likely to happen than the big teams go through. And if the big teams do go through, which the odds suggest they are, then then we've got away with it. And we've got the upside in the group stages and the people with the wild card didn't really need it in the knockouts. So to boil it down... I'm going with a uh, with a chip strategy that I think is going with the odds, not against the odds. It's saying I need big teams to get through to the latter stages, not chaos is going to happen and big teams are going to go out. And and the odds would be on my side on that, uh, or this chip strategy side. So so I'm going to go with that. Now, as I mentioned, wh when I said, uh, look, I'm going to stay a bit flexible, what I mean by that is match day two, if I get through match day one, where, of course, we're going to learn a whole bunch of information about who starts and who's doing well and who's not doing well and who needs to win and who doesn't need to win and all this sort of thing. You get into match day two. If I look at match day two and think, do you know what? My match day one team, actually, with the two free transfers, I can turn it into a pretty good match day two team. and I'm not going to be losing out anywhere, really, and I'm not going to be losing out much. If I get to that point, I won't play my wild card there. I'll still definitely play the limitless in match day three. But then I'll just save the wild card just in case there is chaos because it wasn't going to benefit me too much in match day two, but I can play it in, in the knockouts. And keeping that level of flexibility, I think, is, is, is crucial. You don't want to lock yourself too much into one strategy. Now, I don't actually think that's not... I don't think that's a bad play because when I'm picking my match day one team, you know, when I was playing the strategy, I was thinking I'm only picking for match day one, only picking for match day one. It's not too much you have to change to get to an ideal match day two team, I don't think. Now, of course, if you go triple Italy in match day one, which a lot of people will be who are on this chip strategy, there is then the problem that they're playing Spain in match day two, so that's not ideal. But with two tree transfers, you can get two of them out at least and change to maybe Croatia, Croatia players or something. And then you're not too far off what people playing from scratch are going to do. So maybe saving the World Cup. But keeping an area, uh, uh, an era, uh, uh, not an air, uh, era, air, oh gosh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I've been thinking about this too much. Gosh, keeping a degree, that's it, of flexibility, right? Keeping a degree of flexibility. So that's my chip strategy. Let's take a quick break and we're going to talk to, before, I'm going to tell you my team, right? You are going to see my final team reveal, but we're just going to take a quick break and talk to Josh 
Wooldridge, I think, at Czech, Czech Josh FF. He was a guy who won fan, from fan team 200,000 euros in the Premier League game um, uh, a couple of years ago. Absolutely amazing, right? He's a top, top fan team player. And we're going to see his team for the Euros in this Beat the Pundits League. That is this free league. Uh, I'll explain about it all in, in, in the next thing. So let's take a break and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hear, from, hear about fan team. Yes, hello everyone. So here I am with Josh at Check Josh FF as we're going to talk about the fan team competition that you can get involved in for absolutely free. £2,000 prize pool. Just need a fan team account. The links and everything are in the description below. But as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, there is the graphic. The top 160 people are paid. First place is going to get 500 quid. Not bad for a free competition, right? And there's the added, added incentive that if you beat the fantasy football scout team, you, every single user who does that is going to get a free month's premium membership. So not bad at all. I'm here, as I said, with Josh. Now, first of all, hello, Josh. I'll introduce you to, to, to the listeners and to the viewers by saying Josh uh, is a bit of a fan team hero, a bit of a fan team legend. He's, he's going to sort of, sort of say, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. But he is. He won €200,000 in uh, one of their competitions, uh, the Premier League competitions, for a €20 Euro buy-in. Is that right, Josh? Exactly, Ed. Yeah, it feels, it still feels surreal right now. Absolutely insane. Obviously, that was a, a 20 euro buy in, and there are some buy in options for, for the Euros games this summer as well. So do check them out. But this one we're talking about is uh, a completely free one. I, I, you're going to be in this free Beat the Pundits League. You're one of the pundits we're trying to beat, right, Josh? Definitely. Yeah. And um, I, hopefully, you'll see in a minute. I'm, I'm giving you all a chance as well to do that. So, yeah. Well, exactly. That's brilliant. Let's let's ha let's actually have a look at your team. So let me just bring it up here. So uh, for those of you on, on, on YouTube, you'll be able to see this here. Uh, I will read it out for those listening on audio podcast. So on the pitch is uh, Lunin in goal, Zabayani, Konoplia. They're all three of them are Ukrainian so far. So there you go. Uh, Cancelo or Cancelo at the back. So that's a back three. The midfield is Kravashelia for Georgia, De Bruyne, Fernandez and Verts. So some some uh, more familiar picks there in, in, in midfield. And then up front, it's Schick, Mbappe captain, and Kane vice captain. And then on the bench, there's Moldovan, that starting keeper for uh, Romania. There's Veerman, a Dutch defender. Uh, is he a defender? I think so. Uh, and then Dragusin and Banku. So, Josh, talk us through. Why, first of all, why triple uh, Ukrainian defence? Are you just trying to be different or is is this how you win these games? Yeah, I think it's. I think you have to be different in some way in these games, and I think you you read out my three differential picks in the first three names you read out. I think I think the rest of it, it's like a bit more people could get on board with a little bit. But um, yeah, I like Ukraine's group. Um, they're in with Romania and Slovakia, as well as um, a good team. I think it's Belgium. Hmm. Um, so I, I like two out of their three fixtures, obviously, and and they're dirt cheap. So yeah, um, that's the kind of. I think the triple defense is a bit of a if if I do have a trademark, it's a bit of my trademark. So um yeah, I think I've got triple Romania defense on the bench, um, and triple Ukraine defense on the pitch. So a bit of rotation there throughout the three group games, I think. Not bad at all. Uh and Schick, I mean, all the as you said, all the others are kind of uh more templatey if if you can use that word picks. I, I two I want to pick out. Kvarashelia, obviously the, the talisman for Georgia. Um Georgia are the, the least likely to win, according to the bookies, of the tournament. But are you just thinking if Georgia do anything, it's going to be him? Exactly, yeah. I was the other pick in that spot because he's a six million midfielder. The other pick in that spot was Shakiri, but I'm just not sure on his minutes. I, I do like Shakiri in these games, but mm. yeah, it was between the two of them, and I landed on Kfara in the end. Um, he's playing out of position as well. I think I think things will go through him. Yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, he. He's not playing for a good team. We've got. We've all got to admit that the Georgian Messi, as they call him. Um, and then the other one, the other obviously slightly different one is 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 Schick up front. Now I haven't seen him picked by many. Obviously, he had a great tournament in Euro twenty twenty, scoring almost from the halfway line at one point, didn't he, or something? Um, why Schick? Why no one else? Was it just his price? Yeah, I like his price. He was. He's a bit of. I've been saying to my mates, he's a bit of like my secret weapon because, as you say, I don't think anyone else is going to go for him, or I think he'll be very lowly owned. Um, the others are sort of like in that position. Uh, I, I like Hoyland. Um, maybe I'm the only one, only one with that as well. But Denmark are a good team, so I do. I do think he'll have more success on the international front than he has perhaps in the Premier League this year. Um, and yeah, 
and the other one who I need more money for is Ronaldo. I think he's become popular in the last week, but I think he's brilliant. I think he's absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, there's breaking news for you guys. Ronaldo is brilliant. <laughs> it only took 850 career goals to get there, but he's brilliant. Um, no, I think his two goals against Ireland the other day, one with his left foot at 39 years old against still a good international team scoring brace. Scored 10 in qualifying as well, second top scorer. He is a phenomenon. And yeah, I... I it's a problem for me because I didn't have him on my team and I kind of thought, oh, he's, you know, he, he he was a doubt for the first game and he's 39 now. And then he scored those two and I'm thinking, I can't get into that last day and not have him. I'm just going to, I just can't do it. So now I'm trying to shoehorn him in and it's ripped up all my team and months of planning. So, so yeah, I think quite a few people are in that position anyway. Look, um, Josh, thank you very, very much. Um, People can follow Josh uh, and he'll be talking about fan team and, and Euro 2024 fantasy, I'm sure, on Twitter and X or whatever you want to call it, at CheckJoshFF. Please do follow him. He's a great fan team mind. And uh, yeah, here's his team. So if you want to copy a previous winner, uh, then just copy this team and then uh, keep up to date with Josh. Why not? But thank you very much. You, all the information uh, uh, and, and more is in links uh, below. Again, completely free 2K prize pool. Why not give it a go? Uh, as as always with these things, 18 plus, gamble aware, please gamble responsibly. Even the free game, we have to say that. But of course, on this website, there are paid versions of the game as well. Up to, I think, £175,000 a euro guaranteed prize pool. So uh, why don't you give that a go? Thanks very much, Josh. And we'll get back to the other video. Okay, so here it is. My final team, barring injury news and barring a last minute just absolute like panic that I don't have for Ronaldo as 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 you'll see. Um, this is going to be my team, right? And it is focusing largely on match day one, with uh, something in the back of my mind saying, "Let's make sure it's not too bad." If if I don't want to play my wild card in match day two, but let me read it for podcast listeners. So on the pitch is for Bruggen in goal, Wout Fez, Jonathan Tarr, Mittelstadt, and Demarco. So double Germany defence, one Italy, one Belgium. In midfield, Trossard, Wurtz, captain for that first game, Saboslai and Jorginho. Up front, Lukaku and Harry Kane. Okay, On the bench, Lunin, the keeper, Bruno Fernandes, Cancelo and Mbappe. Now, a couple of things to comment. And these are the, as I comment, I'm just telling you the last things I'm thinking about, really. A lot of these are locks now, but the last things I'm considering. So, First of all, the thing I'm considering is match day one, if you were just really pushing for it, as I said, you could even go double or triple uh, Italian defence because they're playing Albania. I've only got one. Now, the reason for that really being is Jorginho is such an enabler at 5 million. I know so there's been some chat on Twitter and X today saying, why are people picking Jorginho? I don't get it. He might not be on pens and he doesn't really offer very much else. Well, he offers that he's 5 million quid and he's going to start for Italy. That's what he offers. So that's why he's in my team, I think. Uh, he's just you, There's no real other options at 5 million. So I've got double Italy against Albania. Now, I'm happy with that. DeMarco and Jorginho, I mean, they've been in pretty much every draft I've had. I can't really get to to, to, to triple uh, Italy unless I take out one of the Germany defenders. Now, now let's talk about Germany. I've got triple Germany against Scotland. I know I started this process, if you've watched my videos from the start, is McTominay who's going to be my captain. I think, oh, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I just think that's wishful thinking. It would have been very fun and very cool, but it would have been wishful thinking. I'll kick myself if he scores now. Um, Verts, uh, and then at the back, Tarr and Mittelstadt, both both scheduled to start. We've spoken about Mittelstadt 100 times, don't need to. Jonathan Tarr, four and a half million. That double Germany defence is a bit of a differential. A lot of people just have Mittelstadt. Getting that double German defence against Scotland, if they do bring in the clean sheet, is 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 obviously a bit of a differential, so that's good. And I've got... Let's talk about for Bruggen and goal. I mean, the keepers are my... My main problem with this team, keeping match day two in mind, and the possibility I won't play my wild card, are the keepers. Because for Bruggen, sure, he plays Poland in this first game, and he's four and a half million, he's a starting keeper, yada, yada. But in their second game, they've got France, right? So... Not ideal. So do, do I use one of my two transfers to get rid of him uh, before match day two? Or is that going to be something that tips me over to playing the wild card? I don't know. So maybe I need to look at that. And the other one is Lunin against uh, Romania in match day one. Again, a really good fixture for them. But match day two, I think it's Slovakia, which is still, it's not awful. So maybe I just trust Lunin and, and, and keep those two keepers for match day two if I do decide not to play the wild card. But remember, I am leaning towards playing the wild card. It's just I want to keep in mind that I might, change that based on circumstances and things like that now triple triple belgium look they've got slovakia um 
I just I just back them. Trossard is a is a really nice differential. He's, I think he's only nine percent owned. A lot of people have got De Bruyne in their teams, but well, a lot of a lot of people on the on you know on the percentage you know have have De Bruyne picks, and I think that's probably not really the people who are, are, are playing in the fantasy football community on Twitter and X and YouTube and stuff because not many big managers have De Bruyne. I haven't seen. I think Gianni has maybe, but uh, not many because he's so expensive. So Trossard is a good alternative. Lukaku up front again, top scoring, qualifying, fourteen goals. Scored a brace the other day for Belgium as well. And then Wout Fair's four million starting defender. So can't really say no to that, right? Harry Kane is my only England player. I just couldn't bring myself not to have any. He could change to Ronaldo, to be fair, before the deadline. I can see myself bringing in Ronaldo because, as I said on another stream, I just can't see myself on the last day. I'll be kicking myself not having Ronaldo and it's starting. I just, I've always loved Ronaldo and, and if I don't have him, I'm going to be kicking myself. But you're going to kick yourself whoever you leave out because you've got to leave out one of Mbappe, Lukaku, Kane or Ronaldo. It's going to be very hard to, um, uh, you know, you can't get them all in, right? Not very hard. It's impossible, right? So so there you go. So Bosley, he's been in every draft I've had. He's he's just fits into that 7 million slot in midfield. I didn't know who else to go for. They've got Switzerland. I could see him getting getting some returns. So I'm leaving him in, even though, even if I'm just going for one match day, I'm leaving him in. And then Fernandez, Cancelo, speak for themselves, play on the last day, captaincy option on the last day, Bruno Fernandez. And then I've got Mbappe. Now, the issue here about the front three, right? So Kane, Lukaku, Mbappe. Let's talk about the front three because a lot of people have got that front three. A lot of people have removed one of them and, and got Ronaldo in. So it's three of four, isn't it? Now, the issue with Mbappe and Lukaku is they both play on the same day, which is the 17th. So you can't captain them both. So if you are going to get rid of one of the four to make it three, maybe you should get rid of one of Lukaku or Mbappe because you don't want to waste the fact that you can captain them, right? Because if you had, if I got rid of Mbappe and put Ronaldo in, then I've got Lukaku as a captaincy option one day, Kane as a captaincy option on a completely another day, and Ronaldo as a completely different option on another day. Whereas if I've got Mbappe and Lukaku, I've only got, Mbappe and Lukaku are one day and then I've got Kane and then I'll have to do Bruno Fernandes, I guess. Uh, if you don't have Ronaldo, you're going to captain Bruno Fernandes on that day. I don't know who else, you, unless you make, you know, really going for it in terms of a uh, differential punt. So, look, this is my team. At the moment, if the game started now, I'd be pretty happy, but I would be kicking myself when we get to that Portugal game about Ronaldo. But, yeah, what do you think? Leave a comment below. Uh, do, uh, you know, like and subscribe to the stream because you, you're going to be following this team throughout the tournament, I think. There might be a couple of changes that happen, so do not blame me. Like, if you're copying me, which, by the way, I wouldn't do if I was you, but if you're copying me and I change it before deadline and don't tell you, that's on you, not me, right? You shouldn't be copying people. Make your own team. Uh, so do not have a go at me if I do change it, because I probably will. Knowing me, I do tinker a bit. But at the moment, this is a team that I'm, if it started now, I'd be happy with. It's got a flexibility to get to match day two uh, without playing a wild card, but also it's good and, and presses on, on match day one. Just to say what I'd do if 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 I you know if I didn't play a wild card and I wanted to turn this into a match day two team with my two free transfers, it would probably be something like Mbappe out, Ronaldo in, because Mbappe's got Holland, but also that gets me one point five million back, and then probably either one of the Italy assets out, probably Jorginho out, and that will give me six and a half million for a midfielder in match day two, potentially Suchek. At Czech Republic or Czechia, um, who's got a good fixture in match day two, or a Croatian midfielder, or something like that. And and, and at that point, you're doing all right because Scotland's second game is still good, Belgium's second game is still good, Kane's second game is still good. The keepers are a bit of a problem, but I'll have to trust Lunin. Portugal's second game is still good. Y you know, you're laughing. It's not going to be too different from people picking a whole new team. So that's what I'm going to need to keep an eye on. But at the moment, here is my final team. I hope you enjoy it. Please do leave a comment. Please give me any tips if you've got them. If you know how to fit four strikers on in this game, then please let me know because that would be great. Uh, but other than that, good luck. Deadline tonight. Uh, I think I'm recording this on Thursday. You're seeing it Friday morning. For the, so for you watching, the deadline is tonight at 8 p.m. So make sure you've set your team. Make sure you've decided your chip strategy. My one tip would be, in fact, a few tips before I go because this is the last video I'm doing before the deadline. A few tips. First of all, pick a uh, tactic on what you're going to do and just go for it. These games are sprints. 
Uh, it's not like FBL where you can be careful and slowly get get up the rankings. No, just go for it, whatever you're going to do, right? And that's the crit of me going, oh, match day one, match day two. Should I just go for it and go triple Italy at the back and triple Germany and, and you know, and try and get one of the clean sheets? I don't know. Maybe that that will be probably something that I do last minute and annoy you all by by not telling you. But so that's one thing. Second thing is check your bench order. Ch check the players playing last are on your bench and the players playing first are on the pitch. Check that you've captained someone and you've got a captain every single day of, of the match day. So there should be five different options. It should be the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, the 17th and 18th. Even if you've just got one person on some of those days, make sure you get every opportunity to play the captaincy chip five times. Um, and then other than that, good luck. And uh, I'll see you after match day one probably or maybe midway through match day one, I'll see you. But good luck. See you later.